Okay, so uh, welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery class here, and uh, we're going to dive into the markets here and look at some news. Welcome everyone who's here live and part of the Crypto Mastery uh, group and our M3 Active Trader. For more information about these, you can find more at moonstream.io slash M3 or cryptomastery.org. These indicators set to what we're talking about today that are the foundation of what we do over here at Moonstream Crypto. So uh, let's dive in. And let's see, we've already covered some questions here from the members. And if you're watching on YouTube replay, please like and subscribe if you like this information. Oh, with that in mind, I'm going to kill the camera just so you guys can see this. Just give you guys a quick wave. And uh, that way we have screen share. We have everything that we need. All right. I was excited to dive into that part of it. Um, So why don't we come back to this? But I think this is the key lesson of the day here again this is the uh, us dollar index and um you know it's also topping out on our trend strength indicator so what we'd be looking for this is a weekly time frame and uh if i come back into the daily you can see that 107 level a little bit more clearly we turn off our early reversal indicator and we'll start layering these back in and the uh so isn't that interesting? These are a little bit different to the ERI, ERI Pro. We'll talk a little bit about each here today. But over, um, it's not, you know, it's you can't, the DXY isn't really, the, using overbought, oversold is maybe not the right terminology. But regardless, this 107 level has been both resistance, resistance, and somewhat of support resistance. It just seems it's a key level and zone that we're pushing up toward. I would imagine we pull back on the DXY for a few days and then Bitcoin pushes higher, potentially to complete that right shoulder of the head and shoulders pattern that we've been watching. So just a spoiler alert, I think we, you know, we could push up a little bit temporarily, but uh, and we can see our trend strength indicator is turning higher. So I think we continue to push up. I think the DXY pulls back from where we just looked at. So we'll see sort of this right shoulder forming. The big question is, do we hold at this trend line here or do we break and go down to a lower trend line? And so we're going to come back to that. There's a little teaser for you, the cliffhanger. We're going to come back to that because, first of all, I want to go ahead and look at some Bitcoin news. And I always do this together because it uh, changes by the minute. Uh, so what do we have? Um, you know, you always hear me say, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. There's not a whole lot going on in the markets. So um, a little bit of sell off, but that tells me there's probably not a whole lot of in the news. SEC continues to delay decisions on the crypto ETFs. We'll talk about that. The potential, the potential for coming out and approving something on the 17th, but uh, that would be a bit early, uh, but could surprise everybody. I'm just throwing it out there that uh, that is certainly in the cards, not likely, but in the cards. And as we know that uh, usually and often Bitcoin and crypto will do sort of the exact opposite. So, and we can come in here and do the daily hodl, see what's going on on this, on the news side of that. All right, let's kind of dive into some of this and uh, we'll come back to that, the predictions here. SEC continues to delay decisions on crypto ETFs law decoded. So that's really all we're waiting on is some clarity in these markets and some meaningful positive regulation. And so, um, and uh, so I'm just looking at some of the news here, but yeah, once we have the regulations, once we have the ETFs, we've been talking about this for weeks and this is certainly not new news, but if we get the BlackRock approval on the ETF, money is going to flood into this market. And if you guys have been around for any length of time, you know, these can cause explosive moves like this big green candle there. And, uh, you know, pack in the past here, let me just turn off the ERI Pro. You know, once there's a, a catalyst, we can see really strong moves up like we did back here. Okay. And so I, in another chart, you remember I had a similar pattern from this that shot all the way up and I was hypothesizing, will we see Bitcoin 100,000 by the end of the year? I, I think that's unrealistic at this point. But um, once it does get back above the 21 and 50 day EMAs, that uh, is very bullish. Now, uh, we can see another pullback fake out. Now, this was, of course, the COVID crash, but uh, we've seen this kind of thing before. Here's really what we want to look at. And what I am bullish about here now that we're into October, uh, it's a little too early 
to make this call. But you see how the 21 week is above the 50 week. So that's good. But we've seen this roll over in the past. This isn't quite enough. So again, I'm suggesting that from here, we do see some kind of a push higher. And, you know, there are two scenarios here that we can look at. Either we are in a new uptrending trend channel or trading channel like that, and we continue higher. Or if we don't put in a lower high, likely that's the right shoulder of a head and shoulders pattern, right? So, and that uh, is suspect because if we hold this trend line here, we do unpack this more tomorrow in the M3 class, but we have a number of different zones here where literally this could come down and, and uh, bounce or not. So, you know, we where we are now is also a bit of a resistance zone if we look at it that way and uh, drawing these parallel lines. What's cool about the clone feature, by the way, is that it will sort of put it uh, at levels that it thinks uh, could be meaningful. Now that put a little too close. What was I trying to do there? I'm trying to move it down. So these are all key levels we have to keep an eye on and uh, we'll be watching. So are there opportunities in this little rally here? Certainly there are. We want to see though, how high can it go? And you know, the, uh, if it, uh, if it can't get above, I'm going to move that out of the way so I can draw my top here. And, uh, but we, Control Z. All right, got too many layered things in here, but you guys get the idea. We'll be watching over the next two weeks, probably mid oct Actually, this puts us into early December, so we could rally here. This is not drawn to scale in terms of timeline, but it's sort of similar to what we've been seeing. So into we could rally into October toward the end of October, and then maybe November we come back down, and then we see this catalyst in December. I think I think that's these are equally likely to happen at this point. And again, we unpack this a little bit more in tomorrow's M3 trading active trader class. But we do have to remember this 20,000 zone, that CME gap that still could fill. And we uh, we have a different chart for that tomorrow. So um, anyway, let's see from that. Let's keep on with the news, see if there's anything here we want to see and take a look at a little bit deeper. And uh, so the... That's the big news here. SEC, when will they approve? Probably into the first part of next year. That's what I'm feeling. You know, I think we see some push higher going into the halving, but we really see the explosive move January 2024. You'll see some window dressing, by the way, that is some of what we're seeing now on this pullback here. We're into October and you hear the term window dressing more in the stock market where hedge fund, actually more like regular mutual funds are rearranging their capital for the upcoming quarter. And to make it look better, taking some losses, taking some profits. And so because they get paid bonuses based on their quarterly profits. So if the last quarter wasn't great, it makes sense for them to take some losses and position themselves well for a nice up trending quarter and some nice holiday bonuses. Right. So this little sell off here this week is not surprising. What is important is last week's candle closed back above. You know, that uh, the 21 and 50 day EMA, I guess we could make the case, although I don't like to sort of continue to expand the definition of a rocket because, you know, it is we've seen it work the launch pad. We've seen it work on any support, but this is kind of not really a really strong support here. If we draw out this line here, it's kind of there a little bit there. I guess there's there is an argument for that. Um, but what's uh you know, I'm not I'm not willing to call that a rocket here, the scandal here just yet. And especially with this resistance up here, but it's a fair point. And I will have to keep an eye on it. And so but we are coming out of kind of a bottom turning higher on this weekly basis. This is more evidence that we do push higher here. And uh, we had the ERI back here, a bullish engulfing candle and the ERI. You know, hopefully this isn't too confusing where you're like, what do I pay attention to? These are important nuances in how you really start to have confidence in the markets. But most of all, it's how you have confidence in our indicators. The ERI Pro now are these money flow boxes. And uh, this has been very strong and uh, telling on the, is there follow through in this markets to push higher. So there's you know, we saw that back in here, here and here. So this should be a strong zone to hold. Uh, we, you know, we should push higher. I This, again, the trend strength indicator crossing up above this 20 line 
And again, if you're new here and you want to learn more about these, just go to cryptomastery.org. But the combination of these ERI signals and the trend strength indicators have been ex extremely accurate over the last few years since, since we developed these. And so I've been trading 25 years. These are the best I've used. Uh, that ERI is really was an accidental discovery, but when it matches up to this other one, highly correlative. So that's what we're watching right now. And you can read more about that over here. And uh, so let's jump back to that. What I wanted to also put on here is just to see if uh, the average true range is starting, you know, it, technically it's still in a bullish upward pattern. We don't want to see it roll over and turn red. I know there's a lot going on on this chart, but uh, just going through the different uh, signals that we do have, and of course, our radar is somewhat mixed. So we have a not a, a clear signal from the radar here. This is bearish on the daily. Just so what this means is short term pullback. And that's OK. Some profit taking would be expected after last week. Some window dressing, people reallocating capital into uh, new coins for the next quarter. So weekly still bullish. Now, the monthly looking bearish here that's a little bit uh, curious we'll look at that tomorrow in the m3 active trader class because we've gleaned some excellent uh, indicators and indications where things are going from that monthly chart uh, these indicators do work on all time frames right so let's open up the signal line and, uh, and then we'll jump back to a daily just see if we can glean any additional uh, insights from this. So this is interesting, actually. So we have gone green on the signal line. It's a bit flat on the daily. Don't love that, but I like that at least it's green. And here's what's interesting. Uh, the trend indicator. Okay, so here we have the setups uh, for potentially another run and rally here. We have a bell on the uh, trend indicator. So we want to start paying attention to these, especially when we get into the number sequences. Sometimes the uh, bell will fail and it won't get into the number sequences right away. But we are green on the midline. So our criteria uh, using the trading success checklist. Uh, again, if you guys don't have this, uh, we have it up here at the new, a new URL, which is where is that? I uh, just had it. Uh, try and check this one. And sorry, I, I, that was the one I was just going to put over there and had it up there a minute ago. But if you'd like a copy of our trading success checklist, you know, once we have several things on there, is the ERA green and going up? The early reversal indicator, yes, it is. And is the 20 the TSI above the 20 line? Yes, it is. So we just looked at that over here on the weekly basis. I love the weekly because it gives indications of a longer term follow through. So keep that in mind here. We have this trend strength indicator going green on the weekly, very bullish sign. You know, could we pull back a little bit more on the daily inside this trend channel? Absolutely. But uh, this here is one of my favorite signals, you guys, on the, on the weekly, especially when the other ones are aligned. Now, could, can we be faked out on this? Certainly can. This time it happened once, twice, and three times. So we want to keep an eye on that and uh, wait for the TSI, sorry, the signal line to also go green on this weekly time frame. But in the shorter time frame, uh, let's go back to the daily. And we see that, uh, so it's, it's a little bit topped out on the daily. So again, a short-term pullback, maybe going into the end of the week, they come back down here, but we also love to see it bounce off of things like that. So let's say if we pull back a few more days, maybe the DXY stays around 107 and then starts pulling back. This is kind of this will align with the weekly trend strength indicator. Now, if you're new to all this, you're probably saying, God, I don't want to learn all these new indicators. I like my stochastics, my RSI and all of those lagging indicators that everyone else uses. Well, that's fine. Um, we'll, we'll take, you know, you'll be competing against us with these, uh, uh, you know, many and most indicators are lagging. But these are really these have been very good and um predicting where things are going uh, based on mean reversion, but uh, also following the footsteps of elephants as we talk about, especially with that uh, ERI oscillator here, which, and um, okay, so on the daily we are, so we're getting a daily ER, bearish ERI. So again, fits the narrative, a couple days of pullback, and then we push higher again. So you guys can hold me to that. See this red line right here? That is the ERI oscillator is red. So we have a kind of a mixed. So this is where it does get a little tricky in terms of are you trading on a daily time frame or weekly? 
Now, weekly, we'll have a little bit more follow through. So we have the ERI on the, uh, we have the TSI on the weekly, uh, but we have a bearish ERI in the daily. So how do you read that? Again, a couple days pullback on the daily. And then what we'll be looking for is a fresh bullish ERI on the daily. And uh, as we know, we're getting one on the weekly. So uh, that's uh, just, these are just different time frames. If you're a day trader, swing trader, you could do that. But um, uh, here again, the more of these that check off, the more likely it is going to follow through. And let's see, I'm trying to pull up. Where is that other screen? Uh, we have a, all right, Myrene, can you paste the link to the new trade checklist? I've lost my signal chat. And for some reason, the tab that I had open for that was, was disappeared. So, uh, and let's make sure to update that in the uh, YouTube comments because somehow I've lost it. All right, <clears throat> well, uh, back to the trade checklist. Again, this is a great handy tool. So when you start to get above one out of 19, so above three or four out of 19, that's a trade that's worth taking. And again, that trend indicator showing the bell is what we want to uh, look for as well as these other ones up here. And any more above that on top of that are, are gravy. So does the trend indicator have a mid green line? So that's indicating this down here, just to make sure you guys understand this. Repetition is the mother of all learning. This midline is green. We don't want to see a red. We want to see a green and a key and a bell. That indicates a new trend is forming. And I do like that it's forming above the prior kind of high of this other trend back here. Red just means there's no trend. It doesn't mean short the market. So I know there's a number of nuances with this, uh, not too many but uh, enough to uh, to learn. And uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to get to that. I think Myrene may have stepped away. So let's see. I'll try to find that other link for you guys. Uh, and um, unless she's put it in the chat. And I don't see the chat. Okay. All yeah, right, guys. In the chat. Okay. Just put it in there. Great. Okay. So there's the link. That's moonstream.io slash success checklist. I'm sorry, I had it up here and I must have hit enter and it redirected. So if you put in moonstream.io slash success checklist, it will take you to this page here uh, where you can. Um, OK, actually, we need the the link, Myrene, for the opt in page so people can sign up to get that. So let's uh, let's adjust that. Thanks. And okay. uh, so basically, because uh, some people are watching here and. Um, from uh, YouTube, we want to make sure that uh, we can stay in touch with them. So with that in mind, let's keep going on this. The We've covered that a bit. Let's go back into some more news. So that's the big news. ETF still in limbo, but be ready for this, you guys. I'm not here. I can't tell you when to buy exactly. And, uh, you know, we have some, we do work with some clients and privately, but uh, in terms of this, you know, I think it's reasonable to not go not not go all in but reasonable to have some money in the markets here uh, soon if not now ish you know on this pullback might be i think it's a good opportunity to dollar cost average in because it started dollar cost averaging in because uh at some point soon these are going to the markets are going to start going much higher uh if the having for your having cycle which many believe as i do i that uh, that is what will be looking at here and this next having and because of that BlackRock ETF could be explosive. And so other people are starting to say, uh, you know, Bitcoin's starting to surge in October. Um, interestingly, too, by the way, Mike, my business partner, pointed out in this month's newsletter, the Moonstream newsletter, that we had one of the first bullish Septembers in a long time. And that was another strong sign that we push higher here on the weekly basis as well. If we did look at the monthly really quickly, it's a bit noisy, but um, yeah, we had the, uh, September was a bullish month and typically September is bearish, right? So uh, what we want to see, of course, is try to push back up ahead above these levels. So again, a brief pullback, or maybe go sideways for a bit. Uh, these head and shoulders are not drawn uh, to scale necessarily, but, uh, you know, probably some more sideways action, my, mildly bullish in October. And then we start to really see things kick off in uh, November, December. So we'll have to wait and see. Anything could be a catalyst, but good to be aware of that. So make sure you are aware of that, that uh, you once in, if and when we start to see, I'm sure where all this stuff is, if and when we start to see, uh, let's see, advertisement, I'm not sure what this is, uh, the 
BlackRock ETF or the Grayscale. Either one of those could really be a catalyst. And of course, uh, Kathy Wood from ARK Invest has applied to have one of the first Ether ETFs. Now, this is referring to the futures ETFs, which are cash settled, not crypto settled. So make sure you understand this, that, uh, and I'll just kind of uh, come back on camera, I guess, as uh, make sure you understand the difference is that uh, if it's uh, futures, then it's settled on the CME with cash, it means they don't, they don't go buy Ether or Bitcoin. When we get the spot ETFs, then we can really start seeing some big moves in the price and the movements there. So just looking at what this says uh, on this article, this is talking about futures-based Ether exchange traded funds. And yeah, this is um, today, but uh, kind of falling on deaf ears, we have Valkyrie's Bitcoin strategy ETF. Let's see, nine ETFs offering exposure to other futures. Uh, Ether futures uh, came to the market on Monday, it was yesterday, right? So five will hold Ether futures, four will hold a mix of Bitcoin and Ether, but again, futures, okay? So don't read into this that it's going to push prices higher. Uh, that's not how this works. And as we know, when they launched the Bitcoin futures on the CME, that was the exact top of the markets. Uh, also, when we hit $3 trillion in total market cap. Okay, so, you know, we are starting to see futures and derivatives can move markets. And uh, because of the underlying, if there's a lot of money to go after, and if there's going to be heavy losses on one side, that means heavy process, profits rather on the other side. So make sure you keep that in mind. Okay, uh, that's enough of that. So let's keep going on the article here. We have, you guys can go Google this. Uh, here, I want to talk about the BITO, the um, Bitcoin strategy ETF, the uh, ProShares Bitcoin uh, BITO. So if you wanted to trade options on Bitcoin, you can do that on the BITO or the BITI if you think Bitcoin's going to go down. Problem is liquidity is still very low there. And uh, we can maybe unpack this a bit more in tomorrow's uh, active trader class. But uh, again, the let's see, okay, reported trading volume uh, of a billion. So that would be the ProShares strategy ETF. So, you know, I mean, um, but that was back in kind of the, uh, in the bull market. So anyway, Grayscale Investments conjunction, conjunction with NYSC, ARCA is a, basically they power a lot of the day traders, filed for approval from the US SEC to convert Grayscale ETH, to a spot Ethereum. Now, this is interesting. Grayscale, in conjunction with ARCA, has filed for approval from the SEC to convert the Grayscale Ethereum Trust, ETH with an E on the end, to a spot Ethereum exchange traded fund. So, not futures, but spot. Interesting. Um, very interesting. But here, here's some conjecture here. Well, what if, well, unlikely, unlikely that an ETH spot ETF is approved before a Bitcoin one, but anything's possible. So Grayscale's ETH Trust, largest Ether investment product in the world, 5 billion in assets. So imagine if they are approved to switch over, they've got 5 billion in assets. They could, you know, go over. <clears throat> I'd have to research this a bit more. It doesn't necessarily mean they completely go and buy 5 billion in ETH. But uh, that would happen, you know, that would happen in the spot or the um, over the counter market. The um, what do they call it? Uh, it wouldn't directly affect price because they wouldn't be buying at retail and they would be doing it over time with market makers, etc. And uh, so, but we'll keep an eye on that. That's interesting to know as we file to convert ETH to ETF, natural step products evolution recognize it's an important monument, sorry, moment to bring Ethereum even further into the US regulatory perimeter. Uh, let's see, uh, I'm not gonna really talk about SAM. Let's see, this is, uh, I think we've unpacked this entire article, so let's move on. Let's see, Daily Hoddle, crypto trader predicts more rallies for Bitcoin, says BTC breaking out against major stock index. That's kind of an awkward saying sentence there. But at any rate, uh, he's saying bullish pattern in for Bitcoin. I already talked about that. Let's see. Invest answers. Max upside target for Bitcoin in 2025. I think it's uh, just over 200,000 potentially. 
Uh, we can look at some of my targets there based on the Fibonacci's, which are pretty pretty clear and have been uh, pretty accurate on longer term time frames. So, all right, we'll look at this here. Here's an analyst. I'm not familiar with him. I have a neat graphic here saying that uh, what's in store for Bitcoin and the S&P for this last quarter. And one scenario, let's see, he has 290,000 YouTube subscribers. Congratulations. And could dip at the start of October before entering the bull market. Well, no, I don't see that. Okay, so you guys hold me to this. What this uh, Pizzino guy says, he's got 290,000 YouTube subscribers. He thinks we dip here in the beginning of October. And our indicators are showing us differently. Uh, you know, I said a couple of days to pull back, possibly, but we have the trend indicator showing us a bell, and our weekly is giving us the trend uh, strength indicator is bullish and going up above twenty. So you know, we'll have to see. I we did we we were faked out. It uh, it doesn't always pan out. Um, you know, certainly worth. I don't have. My conviction on this is slightly bullish, more than bearish, because we, you know, if we pull back here, we'd catch probably along here and then go higher. So in the beginning of October, yeah, we could pull back a little bit. So I won't disagree with him completely. Uh, let's see what he says. Let's see. Quarter three of 2023, early for a best opportunities as for Bitcoin DCAs, which is what I was just saying. Uh, not I. I'm not trying to be a know-it-all and be right. I uh, just could always check uh, and barometer yourself against other traders. So, and um, you know, we've been um, he's saying overhead resistance. We still have a fifty percent level here, and I I think twenty five three is a more powerful support level. And uh, if we do, if if we break twenty five three though, the twenty three six. I think I had that in there too. Uh, that would be sort of down along this upward trending trend line. I don't know. I think he's looking at maybe a price, but this, but this, this trend line here coming off the bottom, this is very really important that uh, whereas I don't think we retest these lows around 16.5, which I was calling for uh, in, in October of, I think, or July of May of, May of 2022, I was calling for 16.5 when we were up here. And so that's where we held. But we, but if we, we need to hold it and put in higher lows. So it, you know, if we come back here, we have this trend line channel here. We'd like to see it push higher. If we break that, you know, this 25,300 levels, very important. Prior strong resistance support flipped as resist. Sorry, resistance flipped as support and support. So we need to hold 25.3. If we lose 25.3, then this 23.600 is what he's suggesting. I'm saying it's around 23.500. Same, same. You know, if it happens faster, it's going to be lower around 22,000, but it's this trend line. Uh, if we zoom out, just make sure you understand these. And uh, trend lines are somewhat self-fulfilling and, um, you know, but uh, can be important. And so if we lose that, then we have this major trend line down here. So just to kind of keep things, uh, we can make that a little bit thicker here to show. So, you know, look, um, just remains to be seen. I do think we have some more downside at some point before we push higher, just based on this overall structure here. If we do put a Fibonacci on it, however, sorry, guys, I'm trying to talk fast to keep get through it faster, but fumbling on a couple things. So here, the, so the price targets, you've seen me draw these before. I do think 48K to 50K is in the cards based on this golden pocket uh, retracement. But, you know, we do need to get up. And you would think we'd get at least up to the 50% retracement as we show here, you know. But uh, we'll keep an eye on that and uh, go from there. Let me just turn off the, it's on the uh, object tree. But we'll leave it on there for our future. Um, so anything else to unpack here? So nice green September, move to 23.6. There's a lot of maybes here. You know what? Here's the thing. Nobody knows. We just have to, we have to see this guy. It's just like the, calls himself the wolf of all streets, I think here. And, um, uh, I'm not, uh, uh, really a big 
or is this this Pizzini Pisano guy? Uh, um, she is try. I just look. It's not worth pontificating on what it is, but it's good to know what's possible. So anyway, um, these are we've outlined what's possible here, where we think we could go in the short term. Let's look at the one hour, four hour, and uh, see if we have any clues. Pulling back down to a support, but still in an uptrend. And let's see, I'm going to turn on my ERI. I'm going to put the ERI Pro on this because that would be good to see on the four hour. ERI Pro. Okay, so there it is. And something's not working for some reason. ERI chart strategy, take that off. ETA. So hang on, let me do that one more time, you guys. Uh, and I know you don't have these yet. We're still working some things out. Oh, there it is. It just took a minute and I got it on there twice. So the reason it took a while to load is there's a lot going on here with the ERI Pro. And uh, it can bog things down a little because it's essentially three or four indicators in one. So what I just did there is I dragged it up onto the main chart. And if you're new to this, you want to go to the right sorry, the left side and merge all the scales to the one into one on the right side. And I butter fingered that with my left hand. Sorry, I'm going to do that again over on the right side. So there we are. What we're looking for here uh, are these green boxes. This is money flow. So just gives us a little bit more uh, confidence in these things. And uh, that way, when we see the ERI arrow and the trend strength indicator start to go green. These are excellent indicators for starting to uh, day trade, swing trade, you know, not scalping, but day trading same day, next day. I'll turn off the Keltner channel, which is part of the indicator just because we don't need to see it. And uh, it cleans this up a bit. So that's interesting. I'll watch that on the four hour. And uh, now we have the ATR as well, we could turn on here, which kind of giving us a bearish signal. So if you're day trading Bitcoin right now, again, it, all the narratives point toward a pullback short term. <clears throat> it's Tuesday and uh, I will wait and see kind of what happens as the week unfolds. Mm, VIX is up 10%. So we've got some volatility in the markets and don't always watch that. But uh, so the VIX is trying to push higher here. Bouncing off when the VIX gets down this low, usually it does bounce and um, back up in this range so what else can we look at here we'll take another look at uh, the uh, dxy again dxy pushing up to this range where i would expect it to pull back and it, also because it's gotten far away from its moving averages now here we is here is the problem however the big problem the big glaring problem the elephants in the room as it were so the 21 week is crossing the 50 week on the DXY. And um, the other thing that I'm seeing here, which is concerning, is the trend channel is broken to the upside. And if we see, you know, it's this area right here. If it'll let me use this indicator that they hit right there, that crossover. So the last time that this happened was back in here, right? And that was at the beginning of 20, uh, well, the September of 2021, kind of that midsummer where we came out of the midsummer crash. And even though the markets rallied, the DXY rallied as well. And um, just eyeballing this a bit too. You know, why is the DXY rallying, by the way? It's because we, the government did not shut down and we had some positive economic news. The Congress mysteriously and magically, as they always do, passed a intermediate spending bill to prevent the government from shutting down. Uh, and so this also fits the narrative, by the way, of a midterm rally in Bitcoin and then a pullback if the head and shoulders goes over. So if Bitcoin pushes higher, DXY should come down. Let's just pontificate for, for a minute. Bitcoin's rallying, DXY is coming down, but then the DXY hits this area on the rising 21 and 51, 50 week EMAs. And let's say the DXY then is in a firm new uptrend. Uh, crypto would go down more than likely. So 
we don't want to see that. So a lot, a lot riding on all this, and uh, you know, we're going. It's it's good to be aware of this, so that, like we say, like Wayne Gretzky, when the puck starts going where we thought it might, you know what to do. And uh, this is what we really need to pay attention to there. Okay, let's take a look at some other things here. We can look at the total market cap still above a billion dollars, sorry, a trillion dollars, and that's good. It needs to hold there. We'll unpack that more in tomorrow's class as we do. Uh, DeFi was looking like it was wanting to push higher here. I've got an alert set at 45.83. I'm going to raise that alert on DeFi to 48. Why 48? Because that would uh, indicate that it's above this 50-week moving average. And, uh, you know, DeFi, it's good to notice when sectors are starting to move and money's flowing into them. Okay, let's do this. Uh, that's kind of my master list. I'm going to go over to our crypto mastery list, take a look at what's going on here. And, of course, we have that chart we've just been looking at on the uh, weekly basis. Let's see if I can open this up for you guys so it's a little more clear. And to do that, I need to keep this box open. All right, let's take a look at ETH. So interesting that ETH pushed up right to that 17 above the 1700 level on this downward trending trend line and so it's pulling back what we have here is kind of a symmetrical wedge forming and we need to see ETH really break and close above this level to see that it's going to go higher but as we know the markets are going to run in tandem with bitcoin so let me just turn this down and width a bit so my alert here i want to have an alert at 17 so call it 1770. That would sort of let me know that uh, Bitcoin, sorry, ETH is ready to possibly push higher. Put in my buy alert. Okay. So uh, I'm going to wait on my alerts there. I also have alert down below. If ETH gets down to 1525, that's a possible sell zone. You know what I'm going to do though? I'm going to raise that. I don't want to be riding this thing down. I'm going to move it up to 1620. And uh, start leveling out, uh, legging out of ETH if it starts breaking down below this trend line. Because you can always buy back in and we'll want to keep an eye on that as the whole market moves. Solana has been looking good, actually. So we've been watching this for a couple of weeks. And uh, had the, so we have that weekly trend strength indicator. So here's a great looking setup, you guys. Regardless of what the other rest of the market's doing, we have um, Solana with an ERI arrow. So the early reversal indicator put on the uh, smaller one right there uh, the TSI above 20 and bouncing off of kind of a higher low this is one of the more advanced setups on the TSI only if and when there's an ER a recent ERI so ERI TSI signal and bell that is the four horsemen that we go by and we have all four of you guys Solana's looks like it's ready to push higher it's getting a bell uh, on the weekly and it's above the 21 week moving average so the resistance area is above at the 50 week once we clear that that's a very strong signal for solana's ready to go again so i'm going to put an alert on that at 2823 and um you know this little w pattern kind of playing out that we had proposed and with even better with a higher low so move that to there to there okay do you guys see that? So keep an eye on Solana. I'd say that's why it's up into our uh, top watch list. And what else are we looking at? Rune. Is there anything you guys want to look at on this? Uh, Rune is looking interesting here. Why it's in a new upward trend channel. So, you know, if it were me, I would be dollar cost averaging into Rune for some long-term holdings on this. It's above its 21 and 50 day. EMA, one of my favorite setups here. Okay, look at that on a weekly basis. So a bit overbought on the uh, TSI and we are getting a take profit signal on the trend indicator. So what I would do is I would wait, I would probably sell some rune and wait for the next key bell on a weekly time frame. Uh, that's how we read these. The new arrow here indicates a new trend is forming, key and a bell. The bell is a buy signal, kind of went sideways pushed up a little bit but when we get into the bull market mark my words you'll start seeing multiple versions of this okay so just bear with me here we're going to do something kind of new and uh show you what i mean by this when we catch it early and these things start to play out the number sequences you'll start to see these multiple ones and you'll wish you'd been paying attention okay so 
my thing is running a little slow here. Uh, here it is. So basically, I'm just going to copy and paste that same thing right on top of it. Why? Well, may have been uh, some kind of update in trading view because I used to be able to copy paste right onto the charts. What's going on here? Oh, okay. You can do it up here, but not on the indicators. All right. Sorry about that. See this right here? I was going to paste this above down here so you could see. Usually these will run several versions and can really go a long way uh, if you catch it early. So anyway, uh, you can see that and see the point there in terms of Rune on a daily basis in a nice kind of upward trending trajectory. So this might be one to keep on your radar. You know, basic TA is often the best. So 21 day and 50 day above riding it higher. Rune looking very good. It's it's forming a new upper trend channel. So this is one regardless of our ERI. We want to keep an eye on that. Uh, what I'll do is turn on the ATR though. See the ATR, the average true range caught it early right down in here. Look at that beautiful signal. So that's one of the other indicators. If you're not using it, uh, you know, please do go over to Moonstream or sorry, CryptoMastery.org and learn about these here. We'll have a video overview on those soon, but this average true range, once it turns from exit to entry, can catch those early and often they align with the other indicators. So again, these are the best indicators that we've uh, used. And if you want, you can get a month free. If you sign up for six months, just click on that link there. And it's $4.97 every six months, you get a month free, start for $0 today. And of course, in the Moonstream M3 includes those indicators, plus daily classes or daily signal alerts and weekly classes where we go a little bit more in depth to what we're doing here today. So, and it includes those indicators. So Moonstream, you can find all of our services, by the way, at moonstream.io. And we've got a number of different things in there for you to choose from. So I uh, recommend going to look at that. And of course, our Crypto Summit is now live. Those of you watching can go register at the future of crypto summit.com. Actually, it's just future of crypto summit.com. This is free and it's October 26th to 29th. And uh, actually, I think we're shaving a day off of that and we're adding a day in January. But uh, some great speakers, you can sign up for free here with your name and email. And uh, these are some of the speakers that we have. Won't go through all of it, but you can read all about them. Max Wright, many of you know Max good friend of ours, and Dirk from Intelligent Cryptocurrency. Uh, we had a great interview with um, Mark Yusko from, from uh, works with Anthony Pompliano from Morgan Creep Capital, so covering all kinds of great topics, wallets, uh, hidden agenda by behind CBDCs by Michael Hearn at Uncensored Crypto. Uh, the, Kate, the Russian, as she's known, talks about international dual citizenship secrets. So definitely go over here and review some of the excellent topics we talk about. Market cycles with Juan Villaverde from Weiss Research. Uh, Scott Phillips here, he's a character, and uh, uh, this this uh, interview should be R-rated, but uh, he's an Aussie, so he gets away with it. Uh, excellent interviews. Lark Davis, huge uh, crypto channel. Coach K, excellent um very good uh, coach and teacher. So you can see some of these uh, topics, how to track, uh, predict market direction changes before they happen, how to build wealth in the next bull run. And of course, our own Mike Newton talks about wallet hacking, what no one else is telling you. And uh, he did a great interview with High Neck Gina. And uh, I believe this is yeah, how buying and selling with Bitcoin. We've got a great interview on explosion of crypto gaming. Eric Wade, leaving a legacy through intelligent crypto. You can see uh, lots of great topics. I do one on protecting crypto trades from cr uh, catastrophic losses and uh, just on and on. Myrick Theobald from BitPay, even a topic explaining blockchain to grandma. So how about that? A great topic there. And uh, and then one of my favorites here, I'm going to screenshot this because I noticed a, quick, a little typo there. But this is an excellent interview with Dr. Demelza Hayes from Cointelegraph. She's the chief market economist and um, analyst over there at Cointelegraph. She talks about some crypto-friendly tax-free strategies for essentially she's figured out how to actively trade inside of a Roth IRA, uh, even in your Kraken account, and specific steps on how to do that. But otherwise, a, uh, a very interesting interview. I highly recommend that. And, and one of the few women we have on the summit, we're hoping to add more in the future. Uh, and so um, definitely want to see that. That's at futureofcryptosummit.com. 
uh, or you can find all of these things at our website, moonstream.io, including free newsletters and other things. So there you have it. Okay, uh, let's see. What else do we want to look at? Maybe we could look at some top movers and nothing really happening there. Where is... Okay, we're going to have to pull it up again here. Let me Google this for the uh, the top. Uh, here it is. This is what I wanted to find to show you guys. So if we refresh this just to make sure we can see if anything is moving here and we want to look at, we have found some interesting ones in the past. Well, look at this. Serum is back on the radar. So Serum, which we thought were dead, it's up 20%. This was an FTX coin. Uh, I had a, a lot of Serum. Uh, when the FTX debacle happened and uh, pronounced it as de dead, kind of gave up on it, but wondered if this would come back. And it's not clear that it will, but let's just open this up anyway and uh, turn on our indicators here. Getting a little bit of buying excitement down here, but it's, it's below its 50-day EMA. And uh, so even though it's up 20%, there's just no volume in this thing. Let me see if I can turn on the volume. There's not even any volume data uh, for SRM. So Serum, it's a derivatives exchange, was backed by FTX. Uh, on another chart, we have a uh, good old Sam's picture right here, thanking him for the the, the big drop in the markets here. Um, but uh, anyway, we don't need to pick on Sam. He will get his uh, just rewards for all of that. So, all right. So nothing to see here on SRM. Uh, you know, if it does come back, I, it's a great concept. The reason I liked SR, sorry, SRM is it has a monetization model. Any of these exchanges that have figured out a way to make money potentially will go up and be successful. Now, since learning about DYDX, so these are similar plays. I don't know that Serum lives. Uh, I'm going to set an alert here for above this area and if we're at 0 0.09 cents i'll say 0 0.1 cents i want to see can it get above 0 0.1 cents and that would be above this trend line resistance and until then i don't want to hear about serum because it's probably dead uh somebody might dust it off ftx is trying to reorganize i don't think it's going to make it and dydx is a better platform i think because they're live so there we have it. Uh, nothing to see here. And I'll hit uh, save and leave there rather. Uh, let's see. Top coins. It's we're coming right up on the hour. Uh, let's see. Radium. Let's look at volume here just to make sure that we are only looking at some that are worth looking at. So Ray, uh, not familiar with this project. So let's see what they have. We did find some interesting ones last week using that watch list. Uh, not really enough to be exciting and to look at more on that. Mostly red, sorry, green on the radar, forgive me. Uh, we are getting an uh, entry sign on the ATR on the daily. So weekly still looks in the bearish range, but getting an ERI. I'm not familiar with the project, but if you like radium, may want to have a look at that. Let's see. I think one thing we should probably do, though, is go back to our watch list because there was a couple last week, micro caps we found uh, that were looking uh, interesting. But uh, so far, not so much. Let's see, air uh, was pushing up high last week. Remember, air pushed up high on this. Hit resistance came back down. And um, so, you know, these, these low volume pump and or uh, coins are easy to pump up like we saw. So really on something like this, I'd want to wait till it breaks above this downward trending channel and start seeing bullish signs on our indicators. These are all red, so not going to look at that. INJ. INJ looks very good here, guys. Uh, let's just, well, let's unpack this. We have the ATR is just turned to buy. I had buy already on there at the lower edge of this trend channel. Let's see. We have a bearish ER, ARI, sorry, ERI. These all sound the same after a while, don't they? And, uh, but let's look on a weekly so there's less noise and get the real. So the weekly is looking good on INJ. And I originally had this, I said buy on a weekly chart. So we're above the 21 week moving average. We have the ATR is green. We have the TSI turning green. So my read on this is looks pretty good on INJ, injunctive. I think it's called 
I can't remember. Watch your trend indicator for when that goes green. You can set alerts on these, by the way. So let's see. Trend, the bell. Uh, and I forget how we do that, actually. So maybe we can't set the alert on the midline. I'll have to check with Joe on that. Um, well, I had asked him something recently and he said, remove it from the chart, refresh, and because maybe he rebuilt that because sometimes the indicators do get updated. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete it off of there. I'm going to save my layout. Okay. And then I'm going to come back and add it. See if it doesn't change and then refresh the page. So the i've got a number in this in here you guys won't have so don't try to look for all of these some of these are experimental or we've moved on from and um uh the trend pro i know is a newer version of it we haven't really unpacked yet but the one i'm looking for is called trend this one here with the key next to it okay so uh while these look similar I'm going to hit save. Shouldn't have to hit refresh, but I'm going to refresh the page anyway. And uh, so that's how you can always tell if you're running on the latest version of it. The ERI Pro, I'm going to leave off for now because it's too much. And then here, add an alert. Yeah, no, I need to get with Joe on that. Uh, Joe's our, our illustrious programmer partner, a quant engineer, at any rate, um, we want to see this midline go green and, and we can set an alert on the next bell. So how about that? We'll just say on a bell, we want to know and be alerted for that. So new bell on H bar. Now, how do we get on H bar? I thought we were on INJ. So let's hop over to that again. Anyway, keep an eye on your ERI TSI signal and bell. Longer time frames have more follow through. Remember that. So INJ looking good. Polygon Matic, not so good on the uh, weekly. Looks like it's trying to break up higher there. But uh, let's see. Daily looks a little bit overbought. Kind of getting bullish, though, on the average true range. So we are looking for a confluence of signals. I think I'd really want to see this above back above this area and the 21 day or 21 day EMA crossing above the 50. And uh, so let's keep going. Polygon hasn't been looking great lately. XRP sort of down in this trend channel, two bearish ERIs. I'd stay away from that. Filecoin not looking great. Overall markets are just going sideways. So we don't want to look for things that aren't there. You know, XLM Lumens is in a nice big bottoming pattern. Let's look at a weekly basis here. Smooth some of this out. Does look pretty nice on a weekly time frame. And on the ATR going green, multiple ERIs. So what we want to look for here is a trend to a TSI going from red to green. Okay, again, you can set alerts on that. So uh, that would be, uh, you could do it on a value basis. So crossing up over 40 or when it uh, gets to a bell signal. And... This is maybe this is one that he had updated because it's not showing. I actually like to do the crossing up above a level. So right about 42, that would tell me all I need to know on the TSI because that would be higher than we are now and giving us a bullish signal. So you guys just watch these go through your watch list when you start seeing them align and the charts look good. Uh, XLM looking like a nice bottoming pattern here, but uh, I would wait for it to get above the 21 and 50 week moving averages. Let's see, uh, SRM, 13%, we already talked about that. Immutable X looking sort of questionable. A lot of these, I'll turn off the ATR because it does change the color of the candles. But looking for strong support levels, you know, BNB trying to hold this 215, 200 level. There were rumors they were selling Bitcoin to hold BNB up. This is Binance's coin. Uh, main thing to watch here is TSI going up above 20. Okay, and you can set alerts for that as well. So crossing up, my favorite one here, crossing up above 20 and just editing the alert. Crossing above 20, BNB one week. And I'll usually put it in here in the alert name. So when it does fire, you know why you're watching it. Any comments, you guys? I've kind of been barreling along. I don't see any chat questions. So I'm going to kind of wrap things up here. I uh, we, we could go and look at some more of the movers, but for the most part, a lot of these are pulling back. Uh, but do you look for opportunities on pullbacks? 
you know, and um, so we have a key. We have a bell on TRB we looked at last week, which is holding. Now, the weekly candle hasn't finished yet, so we want to see that it holds above this level on a weekly basis. It is a bit overbought. The best, the best opportunities, though, are, as you see, the ERI, TSI going above 20, signal and bell on that weekly time frame. Because from there, just to point out, this trade, had you gotten into this, it would have been on this, uh, so we'll call it the top of the candle. We missed part of it, but it doesn't print till the end. But that was a 457 potential trade on that, on Trellor or Tellor. We were talking about it in class last week. You know, even if you only caught part of it, you know, it's a 276%, a two and a half X. So opportunities are out there. I, that's, I, I will restate watching weekly confluence eri tsi signal and bell can break some find some great trades especially when they're breaking back above or pulling back to support and breaking higher on these so watch for these patterns this is breaking above former resistance maybe it pulls back and then goes again these are optimal times to catch on pullbacks and buy the dip when you have these signals align right so we it is giving another bell signal here i would watch teller toward the end of the week and uh see where that uh, plays out okay anything else you guys this is your time and again if you're watching the youtube channel make sure to like and subscribe if you like this these breakdowns we do this every week unpack the news and look at some movers what we might want to keep an eye on for the future a couple other small ones we saw last week this fit fee i'm not sure what they are uh this isn't ready yet it's kind of it's got to break above this trend line support resistance level what you could do what i will do is add an alert though above that 0.7122 level because that tells me it's breaking out into potentially a new upward trending channel so even if you're not using our indicators they certainly help but uh some good old-fashioned uh, ta will help you and let me go back to a daily basis here. We just really want to keep an eye on the North Star here. Bitcoin, Bitcoin in a bit of a retracement. I, I wouldn't be looking for longs here just yet. A couple of days, we could see a bounce, a uh, maybe a multi-week bounce, as we talked about in this uh, broader scheme of things. But today we're bearish ERI, early reversal indicator showing bearish pressure and hitting some resistance on this daily on bitcoin so i think bitcoin pulls back consolidates for a couple days it's it's however a little bit confusing because we do have a key bell and number sequence so how would you play that um you know that's a good question and if they're not when in doubt stay out the fact that these are not in alignment i would stay out and watch until they are uh so all right. Well, anything else you guys want to look at here? We've got some AI coins we could look at. Not much happening. So you've got MDT, low volume here. We've got ALI, DBC. A lot of these just going sideways with the markets. So I'll skim through those. Nothing to see there. And well, you guys, I'll tell you what, uh, we do have one chat question. Susie says, thank you. All right. Thank you, Susie. Uh, look, uh, we're, I'm going to go ahead and wind things up here. There's not much more we can see. Let's let the market come to us. And if you want to stay on top of things, uh, you can go down the, you can Google the crypto market uh, top movers, price gainers, and look through these and see if there are any on your radar. We have some 10% movers. Sometimes these will, you know, big future movers will land here early on. And I do recommend coming in and having a look at these. But uh, some of these are really low volume, like um, almost low supply. Well, this isn't too bad. We have 3 million, 8 million in volume. You know, we certainly can take a look at these, have them on our radar. Evador. Was there a Evador here? The, these are very dangerous. This is brand new. Uh, I would stay away from those. This will likely come back because like we saw with o, um, Origin token earlier last week, which went up 100% on Monday, or sorry, Sunday, uh, those things often, if not always, pull back. So you guys took profits on OGN because I said uh, take some profits and wait for the pullback. Congratulations, because that's exactly what we saw. 
Suku. Um, okay, so here's one I think we should put on our radar. I don't know what they do, but look at this chart pattern. This is why these indicators are so strong. Uh, so Suku here, we had the early reversal indicator back here, confirmed with the TSI, saw a little bit of a push up, couldn't stay above the 21 week EMA down below it, but now back above it with the bullish ERI TSI above 20 signal pretty flat. Well, no, when you double click it, we can see it's turning up higher again. And we have a new bell and green midline. So you guys uh, keep an eye on this. Because we have alignment. We have the four kings. ERI, TSI, signal, and bell. And let's get some volume on here because... That's a little bit suspect, you know, these can these can certainly get pumped on the obscure exchanges. And uh, why is my volume not? It's having some trouble with this volume indicator. I don't know what's what the deal is. Uh, maybe maybe it's not being registered at any rate. Keep an eye on this on a closing basis. If it can get up here and break above the 50 week moving average. So I'm going to put an alert here for SKU crossing up 0 0.80 and 0 0.805. But I also want to know when it's above it. Because if you can catch these breakouts early, and I mean, mark my words, later in the bull market, we'll be looking back and saying, wow, what if we wish we had caught it? What were the signals? And the signals are there if you're watching for them. And uh, so here, Break above the 21 and 50, but really wanting to see on the weekly basis. We have our ERI TSI signal and bell. I think this thing could, this is one that could double, triple, even if it pulls back. All green on the radar. Let's look at our ATR. This is when you start getting really curious and interested about these because it's like all of these are starting to align. So I would also wait on the ATR when you could set an alert when it turns from um, one to the other. Here, I want to set an alert on this. And I want to know when it turns into bull buying the rocket. And uh, I don't know why this is trailing stop by ATR. And then it's going to call by signal. You can put whatever you want on these. Just make sure you edit them so when they fire, you know. What does it mean? It means just go back and look at it. Because I think an ideal place to buy this, assuming it's not a total shit coin. Let's see what Suku does. Uh, Suku price. And then we'll wrap up, you guys. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, where is it on the total market cap? I mean, it's... Uh, let's we go to all time... This thing's way, way down. This thing's been crushed in the bear market. But these things, they come back, right? So if it can get back to its old highs, that's a big if. I'm not saying that it will. But uh, let's see. Market cap. Here's my concern. The market cap's only $10 million And the fully diluted is $90 million, let's call it. So there's 80 three percent of its remaining circulate so this can be highly diluted once they start dumping more coins out there so that's this that's the challenge with this and it's also hard to get bitrix if you're in the u.s you can't use bitrix kucoin uh i'm pretty sure bitfinex is a no-go they have kyc uh gate io i think those are challenges uh this is Hyobi now changing their name uh coinbase exchange Possibly, let's see if there's any DEXs here. Pancake Swap, maybe you could find it there. But uh, what do they do? Pretty generic. User-friendly tools for everyday users. Create is great. Take advantage of opportunities that Web3 provides without the complexities need for tactical knowledge. Okay. Uh, you know, kind of saying what everyone else is saying. Nothing against this project, um, but, you know, good to look at it. The... Uh, how did we get over on? Oh, this was something else. So Suk, S-U-K here. Where was that chart, you guys? Here. I'm going to add it to our radar, our watch list on Crypto Mastery to keep an eye on. 
and we'll watch that. But for no other reason than if you didn't have these indicators, right, you would be probably not paying too much attention to it. But we have an ERI signal, TSI signal and bell. That's worth a small trade. And if you'd like 100 or 200 percent gain on it, take your profits when that happens. Not financial advice, but uh, in a down market, I look for strength. It's up 15 percent. So there you have it, you guys. All right, everybody. Well, um, that's all I have time for today. And um, I wish you I don't want to keep you guys too long. Please join us tomorrow for our M3 class. If you're not already a member of M3 Active Trader, you can find out more at moonstream.io. And look right here at the M3 Active Trader program, which again has uh, daily updates by me and Signal. And um, I'm the co-founder of Moonstream. We also go over a lot of these similar setups in a little bit more detail. And uh, of course, uh, you get the indicators for free inside of the M3 Active Trader. So uh, and with daily access to me in this private signal, as I said, a membership area with lots of training and uh, other visuals and cheat sheets, including an interactive portfolio tracker. And this is for anybody wanting to take their crypto to the next level in the next bull run. And uh, you can read all about it right here with other bonuses. As you can see, these excellent cheat sheets like candlestick patterns, highly high probability, other setups and patterns, a DCA investing worksheet, a portfolio tracker, and again, these trading patterns, those are invaluable, especially if you're new, high probability patterns that play out over and over again. And of course, our indicators are included in that. If you'd like hands-on training with the rest of our group, many of the people here live today are in M3 Active Traders. So you can also read more about that on the page there. All right, you guys. Uh, well, thanks very much. And uh, we will talk to you again next week and see some of you in class tomorrow. All right. Bye, everyone.